This video is chapter four, part two, pages 102 to 110. And this is some pretty dense reading and can get confusing at times. So let's start with a little bit of review from the beginning part of the chapter. All right, so what again is, is a community health assessment? So community health assessment in terms of um, a summary of it is what was found in doing the assessment itself so that stakeholders, constituents, community members, and health professionals, professionals can understand each health problem that's been identified. And why is this important? Well, this is important because now that we've identified the health question, we need to understand what caused it and how these causes can lead to the problem. So why is this so important for us to do? Well, this is important because the causes of the health problem are critical for the planners. So the individuals who are trying to determine what is the best intervention, what's the best, um, not just appropriate intervention, but the best time and the, the point of the intervention so that we can tailor that intervention to meet the needs of our audience. All right, so in the book, as you all should have read, it talks about something called the elements of a causal theory. And this is on page 104. And at the bottom of that page, there's actually figure 4.1, a generic model of a theory of causes. So that is this next slide right here. So if you have your book, go to figure 4.1. And let's talk about this um, model itself. So this model is actually a visual display of key factors that are identified from the community health assessment that are important to our particular health problem. And these factors will help us to explain or hypothesize about what is actually causing our health problem. And th thus we get the name, a causal theory. So um, slide five, the one right before this, basically has in writing what I just said um, and the value of the visual display to help us to try to really understand the causal factors. Now, if you look at um, this figure, what you're gonna actually see is that there are four elements to this causal theory. There's something called our antecedent factors, our main causal factors, also sometimes known as determinants, something called moderating factors, and there's a plus and a minus here because these moderating factors can either positively or negatively influence our health problem, and then something called mediating factors. And all of these impact what our health problem is, and then what impact we can have, hopefully, with our intervention on our health problem. So let's go to the next slide, slide number seven, um, and just look at this diagram that I have here. And what I chose was a diagram that had the two terms, nature versus nurture, and I just want to review that fact with you. You've heard me talk about this before, I'm sure. If not in this class, perhaps in other ones, if you've had me. So nature is genetic predisposition, knowing that you and I um, are all born with some genetic factors that we can't change, but also some predispositions, meaning some factors, um, some genetics that depending on our environment and our lifestyle, can either be activated or inactivated, something we now know um, called epigenetics. And so in the past, it was thought that our genetics predicted our life in terms of our health especially. So we just had to deal with the hand we were dealt if we're thinking about cards. Well, now we know what's really important is this interaction between nature, what we're born with, and nurture, our environment, our lifestyle. And so it's not as much the hand we're dealt, but how we play that hand. So how we um, care for ourselves, um, 
Do we get adequate sleep? Do we manage our stress? Are we socially isolated or socially connected? Do we smoke? Do we have um, good uh, resiliency skills? Um, how do we eat? How do we move? So many different factors impact our genetics or our nature. So as we think about our causal theory and the four elements, we have to keep this in mind. All right, so let's go to the next slide, slide number eight, and look at the four elements of a causal theory. And I am gonna try to move this up a little bit so that my head is not in the way. Okay, now if you wanna follow along, cause I'm gonna be reading some in the book, on page 104, it talks about the first of these causal theories, which if you look in the book at the bottom of figure 4.1, the first is called um, an existing factor or a required antecedent factor. So let me read exactly what this says in the book. So required antecedents are those elements that must be present for the health problem to come into existence or, a, or are a direct precursor. For example, is there a genetic predisposition that might be leading to it? Is there a prior exposure or vulnerability? In terms of um, legal or policies, is there some sort of legal or policy condition that is a required antecedent factor? Now, um, when we get to our specific examples, it, this might make a little bit of sense, more sense, but what I really want you to think about with these um, antecedent or predisposing factors is genetics really is a big factor here. It's not all genetics, but that's a big one. Okay, the next element of the causal theory is something called causal factors. And these are those factors that influence whether the health problem will manifest itself given the presence of the antecedent or existing factor, okay? So if you look on figure 4.1, this is the main causal factor for the issue. So from reading in the text, it says this on the bottom of page 104. Causal factors are those elements that influence whether the health problem will manifest itself given the presence of the required antecedent. So depending on the health problem, causal factors might be exposure to the health hazard, susceptibility, or what they call virulence of the hazard. So for example, let's... So as an example for this, um, you need to think about the fact that... Um, Looking at this diagram on figure 4.1, what this is saying is that a causal factor won't be a problem unless the required antecedent factor exists, all right? When we get into specific examples, you'll see how these tie together. So we might have to get a little confused before we get a little straightened out here. All righty, um, now let's go to the third element, which is moderating factors. So moderating factors are elements that have a potential either to exaggerate or to lessen the presence of a health problem. So if you look at figure 4.1, that's why you have the plus and the minus here, is because depending on the factor, it can either help or hinder the, the um, presence of the health problem. So let's look at what the book says. So this says that, um, Moderating factors can either increase, potentiate, exaggerate, or stimulate, or alternatively lessen, diminish, and suppress the presence or strengths of the causal factors. All right, so um, once again, when we get to specifics, we'll go into it so we can try to differentiate these four. All right, then our last element is what's called mediating factors. And these are elements that come between causes and outcomes. So if you actually look on figure 4.1, where they're located, they're in between the causal factor and the health problem itself. So let me read you what the book says. It says mediating factors come between causes and outcomes. In fact, without the mediating factor, the causes will not result in the health outcome. In other words, without this process or mechanism, the causal factors cannot cause the health outcome. 
Depending on the health problem, there may not, however, be mediating factors. And then they give a really good example. They say, for example, in an individual, if an individual has the genetic mutation that causes cystic fibrosis, which is a lung disease, the, di the disease will appear and there's no mediating variable. So it is not that you have to have a mediating variable for the disease to still appear. However, if the health outcome is defined as longevity for persons with cystic fibrosis, so how long people live, not whether they have it or not, then mediating factors would include the quality of their health care and how they individually respond to treatments. So, do you see that subtle difference in terms of that? So um, that's going to be important for you to um, understand as we keep moving forward. All right, so now in the chapter, they actually give us examples, which is it's very helpful. All right, so if you go to slide number nine, what slide number nine will do? And this is on page 106. This will actually... This is, these are data presented from a community health needs assessment in a table form. And they use Lafayette uh, and Bowie County, but we're going to say this is Wilson County again, okay? And what they do is they identify five health outcomes. So if you look at the column that says health outcome, it's the fifth one over, you can read the five outcomes that they're interested in. So they're interested in the, um, the immunity level of individuals who are going to be vaccinated for a certain immunization. The next one is they look at the presence of neural tube defects. So that is an abnormality in the formation of the central nervous system in newborns. So they want to um, look at the actual rate of these congenital anomalies. That's the impact. They'd like to see this go down. All right, just like in the immunity one, they want to see the rate of preventable hospitalizations, let's say from the flu, to go down. The third outcome is they're interested in is diagnosis of pregnancy and how that may impact child abuse rate wanting that to go down. Next, the outcome of death from gunshot wounds is examined, and the health impact there would be they'd like to see adolescent death rate due to gunshot wounds go down. And then finally, the health outcome is how many people are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and they want to see morbidity or um, complications related to, to chronic disease change and go down. And so what they do with this table is they actually take the various factors and they look at how these four elements of the causal theory would impact um, each of these health outcomes. So what I want you to do now is take a little bit of time, review this chart, and then in our next video, we're going to actually break this down and put these into the actual theories, which are in figure 4.2 and 4.3.